Hi guys, this is Mehnoush from Rust IELTS Academy. I'm here today with a different video for your IELTS speaking. We want to talk about a cue card in part two of IELTS speaking. Let's talk about art. Let's go. In IELTS speaking parts, you may be asked to talk about art. For example, you may face this cue card in part two. Describe a piece of art that you like. You should say what the piece of art is, where and when you saw it, what it looks like or what it shows, and explain why you like this piece of art. You may find it a bit hard as you may say to yourself, well, I'm not an artist. I have never painted. I have never been to an art gallery. But you don't need to have done any of that. You should just know that there are two things in part two that you should pay attention to. The first one is to talk about all the bullet points. The second one is to cover your two minutes. You already know that? Great. It shows that you've been carefully watching our videos. So um, how about I teach you some vocabulary in this topic and then give you my own answer to it. There is a lot to learn. Here we go. Very well. An artist is a person who creates art. And art can be many different things. Now, let's talk about different types of art and the medium. By medium, I mean the type of material we use to make that type of art. The first one is painting. This is when you paint onto a canvas using watercolors or oil paint. The second one is sculpture. This is the art of carving stone and wood to make some abstract forms. A kind of a sculpture is a bust. What is a bust? This is only the head and upper part of the chest. When you see that, you call it a bust. The next one is photography. Next one is calligraphy. This is an artistic style of writing and the medium, of course, is pen, ink brush or other writing instrument. There are also different types of painting. We can also call it genres of painting. The first one is mural. Mural is a kind of painting that is only on walls. For example, once I was in Mexico, I saw many beautiful murals on the street. The second one is portrait. This is the painting of a person only. The third one is landscape. This is the scenery of the outside world. The fourth one is still life. That's when you paint objects like fruits, vegetables, and etc. on a table. And the fifth one is genre painting. This is not a genre of painting. This is not the same thing. Genre painting is a kind of painting itself. That's when you paint scenes from everyday life. Now let's look at our cue card again. I want to use these words and give a simple but correct answer to that. So the cue card was describe a piece of art that you like. You should say what the piece of art is, where and when you saw it, what it looks like or what it shows, and explain why you like this piece of art. Let's see how I answer this cue card. I'm not a big fan of art and I haven't been to many art exhibitions. So I find it a bit difficult to talk about a work of art I like. Nevertheless, I remember that when I was on a business trip to Italy, I came across a painting in an art gallery in Florence, which did catch my eye. I'm afraid I can't remember the painter's name. But if my memory helps, the painting itself was called Primavera. I remember it well as I also speak Spanish and this word means spring in that language. I heard from someone that the painting is considered one of the finest early Renaissance works. It depicts a forest in which several people are standing under an archway orange blossom, each one as a symbol of a larger than life element. I picked this masterpiece as my favorite since once I saw it, the vivid colors jumped out at me and it created an aesthetic pleasure for me. 
Besides, it's made me think of the time I was in high school. Back then, I had a friend who was a lifelong fan of painting with watercolor, and I remember that once she had mentioned the name of this painting. I like it because it sends us a clear message about the birth. In other words, it implies this exquisite sense of innocence and a new life which I find very calming. Okay, now let's see how I answered this cue card. The most important thing here is to mention the information and some explanation about all the bullet points here. In the first part, I mean the first sentence that I started my answer with, I said, I'm not a big fan of art and I haven't been to many art exhibitions, so I find it a bit difficult to talk about a work of art I like. I said that because it may happen to you as well, like you face an unfamiliar topic and you have no information about it, or you're asked to talk about an experience that you have actually never had. It's fine. You can, just like me, you can say that I have never been to an art gallery or I don't know anything about art and I'm not a fan of that. But then you have to keep talking. So just make sure to say something. And everything I said here, like my experience of going to this um, place and seeing this masterpiece, it was all something that I made up. I have never been to this country, never been to this art gallery, and I had only heard of the name of this masterpiece maybe several years ago. So you can fake your answers just like I did. Make something up, and as long as your answer is related to the question, to the bullet points, you're good to go. So in the first sentence, I actually said, I'm not a big fan of. So instead of saying, I don't like, I said to be a big fan of something, to be interested in something. So one important point here is to paraphrase what you see in the cue card. You should use synonyms and not the exact same word, if you can. Just do it naturally. Then I use the word art exhibitions. Art exhibition is art gallery. So instead of gallery, I use the word exhibition. And the next word, it is a bit difficult to talk about a work of art. So instead of saying a piece of art, I said a work of art. Now moving on to the next sentence. Nevertheless, I remember that when I was on a business trip to Italy, I came across a painting in an art gallery in Flor Florence, which did catch my eye. Okay. Now I want to refer to an experience in the past. So I started my sentence using some fillers or some boosters for the past here. I said, I remember that, and then I kept talking. You can use the same thing. Or for example, if my memory helps, if I remember correctly, I remember that. I can recall that. So you can use the same thing when you want to refer to your past experience. Then again, I said, I came across a painting. So instead of saying, I saw a painting, I said, came across. Because this is a paraphrase form of saying something. And it's always good to use direct synonyms. The next word I used was art gallery. So the first time in the previous sentence, I used art exhibition. But here I used art gallery. Again, you can use synonyms. Finally, in the last part of my sentence, I said, it did catch my eye or it caught my eye. It means it got my attention, it attracted my attention. So you can also use this form of language when you want to use the paraphrased form. Other than that, because I wanted to show a contrast here compared to the previous sentence, like in the previous one, I said that I have never been to an art gallery. I don't know anything about that. But here I wanted to say that, okay, besides all that, there is something that is different here. I have never been to an art gallery, but I have something to say. There is a but here. There is a contrast. So I use the word nevertheless to show the contrast. This is a good synonym and alternative for the word but. And you should remember to use better alternatives for, you know, the simple connectives like and, so, but, because. This one is a good one for but. Now moving on to the next sentence. I'm afraid I can't remember the painter's name, but if my memory helps, the painting itself was called Primavera. Okay, so here again, I'm just saying that I don't remember the name and it's okay if you don't remember. You shouldn't get stuck there. You shouldn't pause and say, um, um, because you don't remember the name. Just make it up. Just say a name and then keep talking. 
I just mentioned the name and I just said something about the meaning of this word in other languages in the next one, in the next sentence. And the booster, if my memory helps, because again, I'm talking about something that happened in the past. Now the next sentence. I remember it well as I also speak Spanish and this word means a spring in that language. Maybe it was not necessary to talk about this kind of information because it was not asked in the bullet points what is the name of the, what is the definition of the name of the, this uh, piece of art. But I just said it because I wanted to elaborate on my answer because you need to talk for the two minutes and sometimes you need to talk a bit more and add further information. I use the word as here, which is an alternative for the word because. Because as I told you, you should use some alternatives or some synonyms for the connectives. Now moving on to the next sentence. I heard from someone that the painting is considered one of the finest early Renaissance works. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just giving more information about this um, piece of art. In the next sentence, it depicts a forest in which several people are standing on, under an archway, orange blossom, each one as a sim symbol of a larger than life elements. So now I'm just describing this uh, piece of art because the third bullet point says what it looks like or what it shows. I just try to some, use some very good words here to describe this masterpiece. But if you don't know how to describe it using such fancy words, it's okay. I'm just trying to give you a very good sample answer, but you can use some um, different words or some simple vocabulary instead. Now in the next one, I picked this masterpiece as my favorite since once I saw it, the vivid colors jumped out at me and it created an aesthetic pleasure for me. Okay, in this one, we have very good vocabulary, very good paraphrase forms. The first one, I picked, it means I chose. This masterpiece, it means this big work of art. As my favorite since once I saw it, it's, it's vivid colors or the vivid colors jumped out at me jump out at you. It means it got my attention mm -hmm. and it created an aesthetic pleasure for me, a very good feeling related to art. And here there is another word, the word since I'm using. Since is another alternative for the word because. Why do I use these words? Because I'm trying to get a better score in fluency and coherence and other than that, to make some complex grammatical structures because this way you can get a better score in your grammar as well. Now the next one, besides, it made me think of the time I was in high school. Another word, besides, instead of saying and, I use besides. You can also use in addition, moreover, furthermore, other than that. Back then, I had a friend who was a lifelong fan of painting with watercolor, and I remember that once she had mentioned the name of this painting. Now, I'm just getting to the part that I want to tell why I like this piece of art, the last bullet point, because I have already said what the piece of art is, the name, and explained a bit about that, where and when I saw it, I mentioned the country, the art exhibition, what it looks like, I described what I could see in this masterpiece. And now, the reason why I like this piece of art and why I chose this one over the other ones. Here we have a good word, a lifelong fan of something. You can be a lifelong fan of anything, which means to be a huge fan of something, to be really interested in something. And just to use the vocabulary related to the art, I mentioned uh, my past experience with my friend as she used to paint and she used watercolor for that. So it doesn't matter if the topic is not actually directly related to what you wanted to mention. You can use some vocabulary uh, related to a close topic. It means that, for example, I ask you to talk about eating and you have good vocabulary about cooking. So you can just relate these two topics because you intend to use the vocabulary or collocations that you know in the other one. So try to do that. You can always go off the topic or fake your answer. That's fine in IELTS speaking. Now the next sentence. I like it because it sends us a clear message about the birth. So another reason why I like this piece of art. 
In other words, it implies this exquisite sense of innocence and a new life which I find very calming. As I wanted to add more information about the same bullet point, the reason why I like this piece of art, I used the connective in other words. Mm -hmm, because I wanted to explain about what I had already mentioned. And another good word here, exquisite sense of innocence. Exquisite is a good word you can use instead of beautiful. So generally, what I did was to refer to an experience that I didn't have and I faked my answer and I just made something up, a story that had never happened to me. Why? Because I had to talk for the two minutes and I really wanted to use my vocabulary. So um, at some point I went off the topic and then I went back to the question and the main topic again. One last thing, try to use good complex structures. One way is to use these connectives that we learned together. So you can just try to do the same thing. The other one is using conditional sentences or relative clauses or subordinate clauses and to see how you can use those or what exactly they are, you can watch the video of complex grammatical structures on our YouTube channel. Very well, guys. In this video, we learned how we can give an answer to a cue card about art. First, we learned the vocabulary and then we tried to use the same vocabulary or some words or collocations related to that in order to talk for the two minutes and to talk about all the bullet points. These are the main points here. You can always visit our website and book your own speaking mock test with us or to use our speaking course. It's very, very useful if you have little time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned. See you soon.